Have you heard the scary stories about the eerie, radioactive box in the dark, flooded basements of the former Jupiter plant in Pripyat? Rumor has it that this box emits about one rentgen. But where did it come from, and what is the actual background radiation emitted by this mysterious box? You'll see the answer in this video. The main source of information will be a person, a liquidator who was specifically involved in searching for materials to decontaminate the zone and work with this very box, which is still located in the former bomb shelter of the secret plant. On the outskirts of Pripyat, behind a high fence, lies the enormous Jupiter plant, which before the Chernobyl accident developed not only magnetic tape but also several military technologies. To this day, it's unclear what was actually done at Jupiter, but what was done there afterward is known for sure. It was precisely this pre-accident work that led to this eerie, radioactive box. We finally managed to find out what exactly is in that gray matter. Liquidators Mikhail Bukov and Nikolai Chuzhikov worked in the exclusion zone from the very first days of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident, and they know the truth. They were involved in work engineering and decontamination of the exclusion zone. They have many interesting stories. And then one day, at a meeting with stalkers, Mikhail and Nikolai told the truth about this radioactive box in the basements of Jupiter. It turns out that in the late 1980s, after the accident, they were working on dosimetry, the Jupiter bomb shelter. And about the fact that there's contamination somewhere, you found something somewhere, right? So, they call us once, they. Call us from Chernobyl from this hospital and say, so and so, two guys came here, they have beta burns, I already know where. I say, in the emergency room. So, we're flying to the emergency room, we get in the car, fly there, go in, and our instrument is just going off the charts. There's a firefighter's suit. This firefighter's suit, it's all covered in resin. I don't remember, honestly, how long. Well, it was shining really brightly. It was probably shining a couple of rontgens. Anyway, we take it, what do we do? We come and go back. We had a lead house. We cut off a piece of the lead house, close it up, bring it in. So, well, we measure what's there. We, basically, take about two square meters, well, well, half a millimeter, somewhere around. That's how we cut off pieces, right? We put it on the spectrometer, anyway, it doesn't measure, it's going off the charts. So, we, we took it, hung it there, well, there's a distance of about a centimeter, for example, we took it. Well, there's a recalculation to do later. So, when we measured this, and what I was saying, it's possible to recalculate, uh, how much this suit was, then at the time of the accident that day, yes, the suit itself was emitting approximately 800 rontgens per hour, right? So imagine, he was walking around on the roof. Two lethal doses. Well, yes, that's it. Just imagine, he was walking, that's how much was on the suit, right? He was walking, this hot resin was dripping on him, yes, this dust, dirt, the emissions from that same reactor were flying at him. And that's where they built this box, which they called a house. Thanks to the thick walls of the bomb shelter, they could safely measure a wide variety of samples collected throughout the exclusion zone. One day, Mikhail and Nikolai were called out because someone had found the radioactive suits of the nuclear power plant firefighters who had put out the fire on the night of the accident. They were asked to take samples because some people who touched them were heavily exposed. The liquidators cut off a very small piece of this clothing and placed it in that terrifying radioactive box in the Jupiter plant's bomb shelters.
This box could also contain other radioactive samples, such as soil from under the reactor and so on. It turned out that this piece was very radioactive, about two rontgens. And, as the liquidators discovered, the firefighters' suit on the night of the accident could have exceeded 800 rontgens. Just imagine what happened to the person forced to wear this radioactive suit. Nine years later, the Jupiter plant was finally abandoned, and its workshops were opened. The dangerous basements, where the infamous house and the terrifying box of radioactive sand are located, were flooded. Whether it was flooded deliberately or due to the lack of proper communications at the Jupiter plant, we do not know. But we do know that we strongly advise against approaching this box, much less taking soil from it, as some people have done. This is the interesting story of that eerie box in the dark and flooded bomb shelter of the secret Jupiter plan. The question remains, does the water that flooded the basement wash away this sand throughout the corridor? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Until the next video.